Yo yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new F122 League Racing video. Today we're racing around Jeddah. I'm not even gonna try to guess what round number this is. I will look it up this time after the race. Um, so I can put it in the, in the title correctly this time. Because I've messed it up so many times now, I'm not even gonna try it anymore. Anyway, we are racing around Jeddah today, heading out for our first Q1 run. Um, can you stop whistling, please? Thank you. Anyway, um, back to our Q1 outlap um, around Jeddah. Again, uh, WR today around a lot of um, non-F1 esports drivers, which means they've probably done quite a bit of practice for this, or at least more than me. Um, simply because, you know, we're in the middle of the F1 esports season and all my focus goes into um, the F1 esports practice. Um, so, yeah, we're heading into this with no practice laps done, basically. I, I think I did three Grand Prix mode laps um, in qualifying, so that um, helped a little bit. Um, but yeah, we probably um, have to get used to the track a little bit in this Q1 session. So, um, championship-wise, we're tr still trying to catch Lucas Blakely, who hasn't driven in a while. Um, but I think slowly we're starting to catch up. Of course, we've got quite a few podiums in a row now. Um, and, you know, the points are getting there. I think we are right now on around 80 points, more or less. Lucas is on 123. So, um, yeah, if we win this one, then we are within touching distance. But, um, yeah, next race I will be missing. So, that's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, stalls or championship hunt a little bit but back to it now q1 first lap let's see if we can get into q2 on one set of tires into turn one got the apex nicely um a little bit too late on the turn in for the right hander but we got around it and now one of the most difficult sections on the f1 game trying to carry minimum speeds and just be flat out as much as possible without losing the back end or getting extreme amount of understeer is one of the hardest things um, of this track now into this next left hander a little bit banked and very often easy to lose the back end as the front just bites into the asphalt on the exit really aggressively uh, into this one a very important exit right here uh, as I actually scraped the wall there a little bit um, trying to maximize the exit because it's very very long again very difficult chicane coming up here um, it's it's so hard to carry the speed and especially on this year's game you bottom out on that exit curb on the right so if you carry too much speed um, and you hit that outside curb you're gonna bottom out and the rear is gonna snap on you and it's very hard to catch and it's gonna, it's gonna cost you a lot of time a little bit of moment on the exit of the last corner, but up to the line. It is going to be a 127.569 triple last sector, so we're absolutely flying there. But um, yeah, we did not go out again for a second run, and we made it into Q2. So set of tires saved. Jake out in Q1. Um, Jake washed, but um, yeah. I think he put it on his Zandvoort set of accent or something. Something stupid. Anyway, Q2 now. First lap on a new set of tires. And it's only P7, so that's not good enough to make it into Q3. But luckily, we've got still another new set of tires to use. And then we can still go for two new set of tire runs for Q3 as well. So, yeah. Nice build up uh, into Q3. Um, but first, we have to get there. So, this one is going to be pretty important. We definitely have to improve on this run if we want to make it into Q3. Again, this first chicane. Easy to um, gain a lot of time if you get it right. Not the hardest corner on the track. Again, this very hard section. I had a bit of a moment on that exit, which definitely cost me some time. But with the track evolution, we're just gaining a little bit as I missed the apex on that right hander so that was not ideal and that definitely cost us a little bit of time but we still managed to find time through that section anyway 
um, around 110 to be exact. And let's see if we can just keep finding time throughout the lap. Didn't gain anything through there. But um, I reckon if we want to make it into Q3, we need to do, do, need to be doing at least um, a 27.2, a low 27.2. And at the moment, we've only got a 0.3 in the board. Ruben Pedrino goes P1 with a 126.9. Now, with our current lap, it looks like we're not going to make that. You can see I run wide there. And I just was so scared to put any load on the outside tire. Luckily, we didn't bottom out uh, on that occasion. Into the final corner now. Breaking point just at 100 meters. Fourth gear. We get the apex nicely. And we get a little bit more time there. So, up to the line now. 1.5 tens up. We are P10. Um, and we're going to jump up to P6. So, we're safe into Q3 with a 127.199. As uh, last car just crossed the line. And uh, as you can see there, Alessio Di Capua, Modesta, Modesto Mena. I've never seen that name before. Very fancy name, though. Uh, Isvan Pukki and Tino Nakarina out in Q2. Ruben Pedreno, 2.6 times faster than us. So if we want to fight for pole position here, we're going to have to nail that Q3. Currently, we are on our first Q3 lap. And as you can see there, we have four tens up on Drake Dempsey. We might be on new stars, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, let's see what we can uh, put up here as a banker. Of course, banker, very important. Not crucial, of course, but it just builds confidence into your last key tree run, if you get it right. A little bit of understeer in that final corner. DRS open up to the line. It's going to be a 126.961. And that looks more like it. Only 2.8 hundreds off Tom Manley. And now we look a lot more like we're on the pace. So final Q3 run here. You can see he's struggling for traction out of the final corner. We need to maximize the speed into our flying lap, of course. So on the limit there, right from the get-go. Into turn one we go. Breaking at 100 meters. Ford K, a little bit of understeer on entry. Which is very common on F1 games. And you can see we lost a little bit of time there. Still up on our delta though, but definitely not perfect. Fairly early on throttle through the S section. And you can see we're getting really close to the walls now. We really are on the limit on this lap. And it's much better than our banker and our final Q2 attempt. And you can see there, I think that's two tenths faster than we did in Q2 on our final run. So we are finding time all the time throughout this lap. 1.1 tenths up. As we head into the next chicane. Exit very important of course. You can see we carry so much speed through there. So much more than in Q2 and in Q1. As the grip is still building up. In these final moments of Q3. Into the final sector we go. Let's see if we can find more time to air. Purple middle sector as you can see on the minimap there. Backhand wants to step out. Tom Manley goes to provisional pole position. With a 126.720. Purple middle sector for us. Can we find even more time in this final corner? Remember, we got understeer here on our first Q3 lap. Up to the line. It's going to be DRS open. Can we beat Tom Manley? Across the line we go. And it's only P3 as we get beaten by Tom Manley for pole position. Only a few hundreds off. So we did find a lot of time. We did the exact same lap time as Ismail Fassi. Um, that's extraordinary. Um, but yeah, he, um, he was just slightly faster. Um, the game counts the four decimals, four decimals well. Um, you just cannot see it. So it doesn't matter who set the lap time first. It's actually by who is faster on the four decimal. So, um, P3 it is. Um, but after penalties, uh, the lobby got restarted. I think Ismail got a grid penalty for blocking someone. So we got up to P2. Uh, starting right behind Tom Manley. So we're lucky with that. Um, we did get our P2 right there. Um, unfortunately, still no pole position for us. I cannot remember the last time we actually got pole position in a league race. It's been a very, very long time. But now into the race we go then. Starting on the hearts around Jedi. It's still light. As the lights go out, and you can see we get a much better start than Tom Manley of the line into turn one. You can see he locks up the inside front, and we get ahead into turn two. Now, all we have to do is keep our nose clean in his opening lap. 
and you can see there big crash on the opening lap and that safety car deployed um, in this opening lap so <laughs> Jake sitting next to me I think was involved in it um, that's why he was shouting are you serious um, but yeah end of lap 3 now behind the safety car safety car is coming in and we are just gonna try and keep the temperature in those tires to uh, try and get a get a good safety car restart maybe try and even pull out of the DRS from Tom Manley although considering he was faster in qualifying that's gonna be very very tough of course but we've seen many times that um, on this game my race pace seems to be much better than my qualifying pace so let's see if we can um, pull it off and out of the final corner you can see we got such a good exit there and it seems like we just maybe a, a little bit more tire temperature than Tom Manley and we're seven 0.5 tenths ahead by the time we go into turn one so we do have a good shot at uh, trying to get out of DRS here but you can see turn one two was not very similar we're struggling for grip a little bit um, we are on the hardest compound on the street track with high fuel so it's um, it's very very slippery in those opening few laps tires might have not been completely up to temperature as well which makes it a little bit harder but um, yeah, you can see there's still 7 tenths as we go into Sector 2 there. So, I reckon if we keep pushing as hard as we can in the next two laps, we do have a good shot at getting out of the DRS window from Tom Manley. And that just makes the rest of the race so much easier if we manage to, um, to do that. Um, so, yeah, just gonna keep pushing and see if we can get out of this DRS window from Tom Manley. As we move one and a half laps further into the race, you can see Tom Manley as the fast lap of the race at the moment, but we break it by three tenths. Um, and you can see, as the rest is enabled, we've managed to uh, break the one second window, and that's huge for the race, because now um, we don't have a wall train of cars behind us trying to uh, take advantage of that DRS which is very very powerful around here um, of course you've got the DRS on the main straight but you also got it in the middle sector and in the final sector again so three uh, DRS straights as we go purple again in the first and now we're 1.4 1.5 seconds ahead of Tom Manley um, and yeah of course we've got no battery left but I assume that Tom is having similar issues and he's also almost broke the DRS to a max whistle but um, you can see that max 8 tenths behind so he is getting DRS here um, on both of those straights so yeah 1.6 seconds the gap now we're gonna try and recharge our battery to um, get something back as we move on to lap 9 Xander van Dijken retired from the race and uh, you can see three laps further into the race. We have managed to recover some of that battery, 34% now. Um, but Tom Manley has also gained three tenths back. So maybe he had more ERS left, or maybe he is using more in the past three laps. Um, or maybe he's just faster, we don't know. But um, all we can do is just keep him um, on that 1.3 second um, gap and try to keep recharging our battery for when we go into the pit window so um, we keep doing that lap 30 now you can see Tom Manley on that one second a brink trying to get back in the DRS but um, we got a lot of ERS back you can see we're on 63% now and we're just gonna use that to keep Tom out of that DRS window you can see he was using a little bit on the exit but um, of course he needs to be smart about it as well because if he uses too much and doesn't get DRS then he's gonna be under big pressure from Max Whistle behind so again no DRS for Tom Manley um, and we still got 50% ERS so we're looking very strong at the moment in this race and yeah we're just gonna keep doing that um, 1.2 second now the gap to Tom Manley I think he might be using a little bit higher wings because you can see even though we're both not using a rear as we gain a little bit on the straight so uh, Tom will be gaining in the first sector where all the corners are but we will be gaining on the straights just because of the wing levels um, so yeah 
uh, that should make overtaking oh, for us boxing. a little bit easier. As Tom Manley boxes from P2, we're gonna stay out because I want to have the tire advantage later on in this race. As we now move on to the end of lap 14, you see Max Bissell uh, was pushing really hard on this lap, oh, and it usually to keep the guy out. And it usually means that he is gonna box um, just to try and overcut some people, maybe. Of course, tire war a big thing on this game. As you can see there, Max is boxing. And we're going to be pushing on this lap um, our ties and our battery to minimize the undercut other people are getting. Um, and you can see we went two laps longer than Tom Manley. And it means he probably has undercut us, but I just want the tire advantage um, later on in this race. Because usually around Jeddah, the race gets decided on the last lap because of the DRS zones. So we're going to be boxing here. Gonna take it a little bit safe um, into the box. Purple pit stop, and now we're gonna have two lap fresher tires than Tom Manley. Why are we passing? Oh, that guy got blocked. And now um, coming out of the box, cold tires. So that's gonna be a bit tough on in this out lap because see there, Tom Manley and Chana Kinsey uh, in a net P2. I have no idea where he came from. Uh, he must have gone for a very aggressive undercut. Um, like maybe start of lap 12 or 11 to get into position. Because I don't know where he was before, but he was not uh, anywhere close to uh, Tom Manley for sure. Because Max Whistle was right behind. Now Ismail Fassi right behind us. Uh, has a 5 second penalty for speeding in the pit line, I think so. As you can see, I'm using some of my ERS weaving a little bit to bring the tires up to temperature. We lost straight away a lot of time in sector one because those tires are so cold. And now I need to push a little bit to try and stay in the DRS. Now, big tire advantage we've got compared to the guys ahead. So that's gonna help us quite a lot. All right, the loss was pretty minimal considering the tire advantage we have now. As you can hear me say that, loss was pretty minimal. Um, for the tire advantage we have and it means yeah we only lost two seconds to Tom Manley basically and we've got two lap fresher tires so that's gonna help us but unfortunately we've caught a lot of traffic that still needs to make a pit stop um, and yeah usually that causes quite a lot of chaos as you can see there Chan hits Tino into turn one Tino has to go wide and now it's gonna turn into a complete shit show <gasps> So yeah, that's that. I absolutely blew up Chana Kinsey. Um, and yeah, that's that. <laughs> I just break too late while going side by side with Tino. I was just desperate to get ahead of him. Um, but in the process, I just, as there's an Alpine going backwards, um, in the process, I just break too late and um, hit Chan really hard, spun him around. Um, he got going really fast again because he's only a few seconds behind us. So uh, I think he did like a quick 360 and got going again. But uh, we've ruined this race by um, making that rooking mistakes. And now it's gone into chaos again as Jake is on old hearts. Uh, hasn't boxed as well. I have no idea why he's not boxed. Because these hard runners are like four seconds per lap of the pace. Um, their hearts have died. And you can see their <laughs> the speed what are difference. What people doing, man? Um, although I, I do think Jack actually have wing damage and that's why he's backed off there. But um, yeah, I killed Chan and ruined his race. So um, <laughs> as we're getting fast max, uh, Jake is complaining about getting hit. Maybe should have boxed for new tires then, mate. But um, yeah, a lot of people were old uh, out on old hearts. Um, and yeah, the speed difference just was so big that a lot of incidents occurred. I did the same. Um, I fell for it a little bit. And um, yeah, just a little bit of a rookie mistake for me. Um, I think I, of course, took out Chan. But I think also Tino lost his front wing in the process. So only one to blame is me. 
Um, I just mess it up really badly. But um, back to the race we go. Um, we still just need to maximize what we can do here, even though very much likely there's going to be a penalty um, post race for me shunting into Chan. Um, so yeah, all we can do now is just keep pushing as hard as we can and try and maximize our result. Luckily, we managed to get back to the lead group um, with the help of the tire advantage, of course. And now, final lap. You can see ERS-wise, we're doing pretty well. Ismail is using some of the battery to try and close up to Tom. But we're just gonna save it for uh, the very uh, final lap. And that final straight in the run-up to the final corner is where the race is most likely gonna be decided. So we need to wait and make sure we get close um, in the second sector so we can have a go in that final straight in the run-up to the final corner and then of course towards the finish line now again using a bit of my battery there to make sure we stay close not too close because we don't want to waste our battery um, on getting stuck behind the Ismail and uh, being stuck in the dirt here um, of course you've got a maximum deployment allowed over here per lap as well so we need to make sure we don't hit that in the run up as you can see not happy there because I made a quite a big mistake which cost me a lot of time we can see we are getting close enough now to have an attempt at least into the final corner you can see we nailed the apex there and we got a good exit we got a good run we end the slipstream of Ismail Fassier in the run up to the final corner and you can see Tom Manley no DRS and he has no battery remaining as well we're gonna have a little look down the inside of the final corner but we're gonna play it safe and go for the switchback Turn on the overtake. We know we've got more battery. We've got more traction because of the better tires. We're gonna take the slipstream here of Ismail Felsi, but we just <laughs> missed out. Luckily for us, Ismail had a five-second penalty for speeding in the pit lane, and we did win on track. After the race, Chan decided not to um, put an inquiry against us for taking him out. Um, so we're very lucky with that. We owe Chen a beer, probably. Although he might be underage, so maybe not. Maybe we owe him something different. But um, yeah, we're very lucky with that. Um, little shout out to Chen for not, uh, for not uh, putting an inquiry against me. But yeah, I definitely deserve the penalty, to be honest. We did win. Um, but yeah, um, it was just a big mistake from my side also. Tino decided to not put an inquiry against us because we killed his race as well. We killed his front wing. So we are very lucky um, that both Tino and Chan didn't put a steward inquiry against us. Um, so yeah, 25 points in the back uh, with a little bit of luck um, and help from Chan and Tino. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. We're getting back in the championship. I'm still enjoying league racing, even though we're not practicing a lot for these races because of F1 Esports. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed nonetheless it was a very exciting race in my opinion hope you guys enjoyed make sure to like subscribe for more league racing content and see you guys next time ciao